Snake, we're not tools of the government or anyone else. Fighting was the only thing, the only thing I was good at. But at least I always fought for what I believed in. Snake, farewell. Some people are born to be soldiers and some are made to become soldiers. With a such in-depth story as Metal Gear Solid, based around several important themes and topics, that shed the light on war itself, as war within the collective of its reason to fight the war, and also the individual level of the impact of war it has on the person. There's no exception that throughout Metal Gear Solid, that the legacy of Frank Yeager is a huge shadow that spans wide over many of the protagonists within the game. Within his dark legacy of being the perfect soldier, is riddled within lies, deceit, tragedy, because as we know, the shadow organization behind mostly of the events that take place in Metal Gear Solid, such as Cypher, the Patriots, and of course, La Li Lu Lai Lo, throughout the years of course have changed their names, changed their names but still are the same collective group behind the very reason behind Frank Yeager's devastating backstory. They had the reins on Yeager's life, you could say, controlling him, shaping him, molding him into the perfect soldier for their grand experiments that would continue way many years ahead in the Metal Gear timeline that all stemmed from Frank Yeager, such as the Lavance on Terry project coined as the Terrible Children, both the creation of Liquid Snake and Solid Snake, along with Solidus and Cypher's psychologically manipulated soldiers, Venom Snake and Raiden, which of course would be the predecessors for Frank Yeager's tragic but yet brilliant redemption story, and how Frank Yeager's meme, his legend, was unknowingly carried on through the protagonist within the game, who would seek to break free from the clutches of those that try to gather them and own them into their own moldable tools, and break free from governments and nations to fight for what they believe in. And yes, even in death, this fox was leaps and bounds ahead of the hounds. Frank was the perfect soldier amongst many to come, and of course his best friend Snake, who would knowingly continue his meme. Hello everybody, my name's The Voice Box, and remember, a cornered fox is more dangerous than a jackal. Cornered fox is more dangerous than a jackal! a look into Frank Yeager's childhood, we can see that he was born into conflict. During the Mozambique War of Independence, which was an armed conflict between the guerrilla forces of the Mozambican Libertarian Front, or Free Limo, and Portugal, the war officially started in September 25th in 1964 and ended with a ceasefire on September 8th during 1970s war resulting in a negotiated independence in 1975. As a child, Frank Yeager fought with Free Limo, which was founded in 1962. Free Limo began as a nationalist movement fighting against the self-determination and independence of Mozambique from the Portuguese colonial rule. During his time as an anti-colonial struggle, Free Limo managed to maintain friendly relations with both the Soviet Union and China, and received military and economic assistance from both Moscow and Beijing. Independence was achieved in June 1975 after the Carnation Revolution in Lisbon the previous year. It was during that War of Independence that a young Frank Yeager would find himself in, and even at a young age, fighting against colonial governments that wish to try and take independence away from nations that are free from government control. Of course, he was known for his cruel war tactics. He would trick enemies into letting their guard down by acting with the frankness of a young boy before killing them with the ruthlessness of a hunter. This earned him the title of Frank Hunter from his enemies, which evolved into Frank Jaeger. Of course, this would be referenced quite widely within Portable Ops. I know your name. Name? It was four years ago, in Mozambique. There was a child soldier fighting with a guerrilla group in the struggle for independence. He killed dozens of government soldiers with just a single knife. He'd throw the enemy off guard with the innocent frankness of a young boy. Then he'd prey on them with the cold cruelty of a hunter. He spoke a little German, so his enemies called him 
Frank Yeager, the Frank Hunter. Frank Yeager, my name. Throughout the war, Yeager killed dozens of government soldiers in the Portuguese regime. And in 1966, renowned mercenary Big Boss after Operation Snake Eater became acquainted with the likes of Jaeger in Mozambique after stopping him in battle. And of course, he placed the young boy into a rehabilitation facility, believing that he would be safe. This of course just leads to the evidential horror of what is Frank Jaeger's story. A young boy taken in to a rehab facility in hopes of a new normal life. But of course, instead, Jaeger was taken by the CIA and used as a test subject in the Perfect Soldier Project. Which would be the very beginning of Frank Jaeger's decline within both mental and physical health in terms of his trauma, his PTSD, and his dissociation from oneself being shaped and molded into a killing machine. Boss, even then, you were the one who stopped me. I was raised by adults to be a tool of war. But you defeated me. Watched over me. I'm sorry. I thought you'd have been safe at the rehab facility. I had no idea they'd subject you to this. It had to be the philosophers. It's okay, big boss. You're always there to save me. You help me fill the void inside. The project turned Frank into a more efficient soldier, capable of killing his targets without remorse. But however, it was at a cost, because when he was not fighting, he was kept in a fluid-filled sensory deprivation tank, which would reset his memories and suppress his emotions. Jaeger wasn't the only one subjected to this sickening treatment that was made by the Patriots. Jaeger was of course the only surviving test subject of the project, hence why he was deemed a lost number and given the code name of Null. We're currently reinitializing his memory and readjusting his sensory nerves in the culture tank. By my estimate, it'll take another 12 hours, at least. Half a day? He has to be readjusted after each deployment. Not much better than a prototype, a test subject. My apologies, sir. The culture fluid takes time to prepare. With such limited equipment and personnel, readjusting Null isn't... I know. That's why I brought along a specialist. During the San Geronimo incident, Null, aka the Perfect Soldier, operated as a member of the Fox unit. Despite him being laid back in his culture tank, Null's memories of the battle with Big Boss couldn't be erased. Unlike any other time when he's in battle, he is easily resettable when he's inside this chamber. But something about the enigmatic Big Boss seems to linger within his mind. Perhaps somewhere with these broken, fragmented memories are some remembrance of the day when he was a child and rescued by Big Boss. In a way, it almost seems like Frank fears Big Boss. He can't understand that if he's the perfect soldier, that why isn't he that he can't overcome the legend Big Boss himself, but in a sense deep down holds some kind of respect and quite naturally that after all had been done to him in experiments would be quite confused. I think one thing would be evidently clear within Frank Yeager's life and that would be the influence of Big Boss's mindset and ideologies that would go on to his own. As the level of honor that Big Boss carries in battle would also find its way to Frank Yeager, with Big Boss having the opportunity to kill Frank with inside the chamber, would do the honorable thing by saying it doesn't feel right to kill a man unarmed. Something at the time Frank Yeager wouldn't understand, as he was programmed to be this killing machine. Big Boss was somewhat of a hero to Frank, because after all these years of being controlled, he finally had something called liberty, thanks to the boss freeing him from the shackles of complete mind control. But still during the grace period of the San Geronimo incident, he was still null, still void of emotion. Does he have ESP too? No, he's just an ordinary human being. That is, he used to be. He was raised in a special way, under very special conditions, to be a great warrior. He's incapable of emotions, or doubts. He's the ultimate combatant, created with one purpose only, to accomplish the mission. He has no human memories, the only thing he has left are his skills in battle. No memories. Each time he completes a mission, he undergoes readjustment. Like this. Inside the culture tank, all five senses are shut out completely. Most men would go mad in minutes. Like a baby who's coming into the world for the first time, the perfect soldier's sensors are honed to a razor sharpness. He can read the enemy's movements and learn them faster than any normal person ever could. What kind of person could endure that kind of extreme training? Don't even think about fighting him. You can't possibly win, Snake. Mm -hmm. 
you could be right about that. Or you could shoot him now, but you'll have to go through me. I'm no assassin. Shooting a soldier with their guard down isn't my style. After slaughtering many Soviet soldiers, he would confront Big Boss again at the sub's power station, revealing that his mind was littered with corpses. There's no doubt that Frank Yeager's mind was definitely desensitized to all the amount of murder and killings that he had been a part of, and he almost had a fatalistic and nihilistic view of life. And of course, when he would ask Big Boss, why won't you die? What do you hope to accomplish by living? Almost showing an unhinged side of Frank Yeager, which has obviously been implemented into his mind to just be nothing more than a soulless killing machine that doesn't have any regard to human life. All I see are the bodies of men I've killed, lying in front of me. My memory is riddled with corpses. I know. Everybody dies. Crime, disease, accidents, war. No matter how noble a person you are, no matter how good a soldier, there are no exceptions. Even if I don't kill them, they die. This world is full of death, and yet you won't be killed. Why? Why do you still live? What do you hope to accomplish by living? What about Frank? The child soldier from Mozambique. He's alive, though he's a mess both mentally and physically. I guess he'll be in the hospital for a while. After that, I don't know. He may never be able to go back to leading a normal life. And of course, Colonel Campbell would be right. He would never live a normal life after that. Jaeger's battle vader as Null was later recovered by Zero and then revealed this to Ocelot and requested his assistance in a project. Battle data from the perfect soldier. Genes. Genome? I see. Intriguing. I'll help you with the project. In 1979, during the Rhodesian Civil War, Jaeger was responsible for killing the parents of a young girl, who would later take the name Naomi Hunter. Feeling immense guilt upon discovering the nurse-starved child by the Zanzibazizi River, he gave Naomi his rations and chose to adopt her caring for her as a younger sister. Of course, his killings of her parents and his guilt for the action would continue to haunt Jaeger the rest of his life. He naturally kept the true reason for the loss of her parents a secret from Naomi. The telling thing of it all is that it showed that within the PTSD and the trauma of being this super soldier, Frank really did have somewhat of a heart, and he would develop a bond with the likes of Naomi and so forth with Naomi with Frank. And it's probably the only closest thing that Frank ever had in his entire life to any kind of love or some artificial family. But it's a telling foreshadowing as Colonel Campbell said himself, I don't think that Frank would go on to live an ordinary life. Of course, he would live with immense guilt for the rest of his days. And of course, killing Naomi's parents was just one of them. I am a prisoner of death. Only you can free me. Box, stay out of this. What about Naomi? She's hell-bent on taking revenge for you. Naomi? You're the only one who can stop her. No, I can't. Why? Because I'm the one who killed her parents. I was young then, and couldn't bring myself to kill her too. I felt so bad that I decided to take her with me. I raised her like she was my own blood to soothe my guilty conscience. Even now, she thinks of me as her brother. But from the outside, we might have seemed like a happy brother and sister. But every time I looked at her, I saw her parents' eyes staring back at me. Tell her for me. Tell her that I was the one who did it. The Mozambican Civil War was a civil war fought in Mozambique from 1977 to 1992. Like many regional African conflicts during the late 20th century, the impetus for the Mozambique Civil War included local dynamics exacerbated greatly by the polarizing effects of the Cold War politics. The war was fought between Mozambique and ruling Marxist, and of course Free Limo, and the anti-communist insurgent forces of the Mozambique and national resistance, RINAMO. It was there where Frank was a part of RINAMO, which was a guerrilla organization and political party in Mozambique, that fought against the ruling Free Milo Party from 1977 to 1992. 
It was founded with the support of the Rhodesia and later South Africa and opposed Free Limo's socialist policies. Of course, both parties had different ideologies. Some people may think that Free Limo was right because they fought for the independence and sovereignty of Mozambique and tried to improve the living conditions of the people. However, some others, like Frank Yeager, may think that Renamo was right because they resisted the authoritarian and oppressive rule of Free Limo and defended the rights and interests of the rural and traditional communities. However, both sides have also committed human rights violations and atrocities during the war, so neither side was able to really say that they was wrong or right. But if one thing is evidently clear, there's a good reason for why Frank Yeager joined Renamo. After all, he has been oppressed by many authoritarian governments that have tried to use him for their own greedy ends. But it's during that war when Frank Yeager would later endure severe torture, in which his nose and ears were cut off. He was ultimately rescued, again, by Big Boss. It was while in Mozambique during the 1980s that Yeager's adoptive sister Naomi met Big Boss, who would later take them both to the United States. Yeager and Big Boss eventually returned to Africa to continue the war, leaving Naomi behind in America. This is Outer Heaven. Five years prior to Operation Intrude, Jaeger served in the U.S. Special Forces Unit, Foxhound, with Big Boss himself. Being reinstated as its commander, Jaeger was the only member to receive the unit's highest commendation, being awarded the codename Fox, having been decorated five times. Fox was considered an unofficial leader in Foxhound due to his extraordinary soldiering skills and his keen intellect. And in 1995, Gray Fox on the orders from the US government due to the concerns they had about this mysteriously powerful military nation in South Africa, led by a mystery man that seemed to be on the verge of a massive mobilization, of course that man being Venom Snake, Big Boss's Phantom, where both Big Boss and Venom wished to overthrow the rules of the patriots that they had in America. With Big Boss being somewhat of an insider in the US government at the time, would relay information to Venom Snake regarding the matter of Frank Yeager's arrival. Of course, being one of Big Boss's allies, he had no choice but to send one of his own there in order to cover his own tracks. But of course, unknowingly at the time, Gray Fox would fulfill his task by successfully infiltrating Outer Heaven, of course discovering the new weapon that was being developed unknowingly by Big Boss and Venom Snake, Metal Gear. Of course, Frank Yeager's mission wouldn't prove too successful, as he would find himself getting captured by the likes of the Outer Heaven forces, which then Solid Snake, US Forces Special Unit Foxhound, a comrade in arms and a friend, would be there to try and rescue Grey Fox from being captured. Of course, Snake was called in for his first assignment for Foxhound, with his commanding officer Big Boss briefing him on the situation and handing him a classified document, assumably from the US or the Patriots, on the orders that Solid Snake to perform a follow-up mission entitled Operation Intrude. Of course, his objectives were to rescue Fox and find out the truth behind Metal Gear, and of course, Big Boss contacted Snake through the radio in which he instructed him and told him that what he was about to experience was nothing like he has seen in battle before. If we're going to go into a bit of a theory and speculation behind Big Boss's intentions, obviously he assumed that the rookie Solid Snake would fail on his mission, therefore that his partner Venom would get away with being able to continue building his outer heaven. It is possible, though, to believe that Big Boss also had intentions for Venom Snake to be eventually eradicated, therefore taking the attention and spotlight now that Big Boss is dead for him to then continue his own true Outer Heaven elsewhere, which would take place in Zanzibar. Although, realistically speaking, I don't think Big Boss intended for Venom Snake to die. I just don't think he realized how damn good Solid Snake was. And with that cleared up to get back on topic, Fox would be rescued by Foxhound member Solid Snake. Of course, Fox provided Snake with all the known facts about Metal Gear, a nuclear-equipped walking battle tank, you know the rest, and ultimately destroyed the TX-55, all thanks with the help of Grey Fox making sure that he had this intel. Of course, Outer Heaven would eventually fall, with it being exploded and destroyed, with the identity of leader of the Big Boss considered dead, and of course, all traces of Fox was lost, and it appeared that maybe he had followed after his commander, Big Boss himself. 
Neither known to be dead or alive, one thing is certain that Fox has got a great sense of loyalty and is willing to stand in front of what he believes in in order to carry out his mission. Of course, that if of his loyalties to Big Boss, would have learned a great many deal of things from the likes of this legendary soldier. Such a great deal of respect as well that goes together, such as fucked his admiration of Solid Snake and understanding what it is to be a soldier. Of course, all of this would seem like he was over and done with until one particular disturbance. After deserting Foxhound, Fox accompanied Big Boss to Zanzibar land in Central Asia. He assisted in the formation of Zanzibar land through the participation in the Mercenary War, and became Big Boss's most trusted lieutenant. After their success in the war, Fox was given his own command among Zanzibar land military. Of course, by this time, a new Metal Gear was being developed called Metal Gear D. Of course, once again, Snake would be coming out of retirement under the assistance of Roy Campbell. No, that's just great. Just when I was enjoying my retirement, Campbell. Fox was conflicted over Big Boss's moral choices and his plans to bring around a new age of global conflict. Of course, he'd become a secret informant to his old comrade Snake, justifying his payback for his selfish desire for battle. And of course, during the first mission that Snake had undertaken in Zanzibar, Fox began transmitting anonymous messages to him, claiming to be his number one fan in order to help him overcome certain obstacles and traps. Won't turn out like me. I'll have to remember that. Fight hard. Snake, don't let your fans down. My fans? It was you, wasn't it? You were the voice on the radio. Call it payback for being so selfish. See you on the other side, Snake. You won't be alone, Frank. Gustava is waiting for you. Gustava. Thank you, Snake. Some of you may not know this, but there was a re-release of Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Of course, Gustava is Frank Yeager's love interest, but in the very original Metal Gear Solid 2, not the re-release, her name was originally called Natasha, which of course they had to change the names around to not get it confused with the likes of Natasha Romanico from Metal Gear Solid 1. A while back, Frank Yeager and Gustavo Hefner, these two tried to elope together, but because of Western authorities rejected her a bit for asylum, she was sent back to her country, where she was stripped of her competition rights. Following the incident, Yeager developed a great deal of resentment for the Cold War politics and just all-round governments in general. Sadly, the reunion between Gustavo and Frank Yeager was a tragic one, as there was an elaborate trat set up by Dr. Madnar as a result of Gustavo being hit by a missile. Ironically, who was piloting the Metal Gear at the time was her former lover, Frank Yeager. It was unknown if he was intentionally meant to kill his ex-lover, but chances are he probably did as he aimed for the bridge knowing that Gustavo was on it. If one thing is for certain, there is no right and wrong within war, not ever, but in case of Frank Yeager's situation, there is a conflict within him, a conflict between right and wrong, where sometimes Frank will do the right thing, but sometimes more than none, he is no stranger to just being an outright villain, and of course just killing anyone who gets in the way of his plans. It's quite fair to say that he is conflicted with making the right decision, especially in Metal Gear 2, but of course we'd see the redemption of his good side more in Metal Gear Solid 1. So it was at the Bridge of Sorrow in which Frank Yeager warned Snake to turn back and leave Zanzibar land. Snake, it's me, Grey Fox. Grey Fox? I won't let you cross this bridge. I'm taking Petrovich with me. We were once friends. I'll let you go this time. Go back to your country at once. <laughs> Fox, I'll never give up! Frank Yeager's loyalties towards Solid Snake is a big thing within Metal Gear because practically throughout the majority of his mission, he helps Solid Snake out in several different situations. Aside from him wanting to do the right thing, I believe it's a case of him wanting to put the legends to the test. He knows how great Big Boss is and understands that he's a legendary soldier, but he knows that Solid Snake is one of Big Boss's own. An inner warrior soldier mentality is fascinated by such things. Hence why at times he puts Solid Snake in tough predicaments, almost like he's trying to test how good he is. It's a weird kind of friendship, but I'll leave that one for you to figure out. 
Of course, Fox again would later contact Snake when the latter's elevator in the tower building was immobilized because Snake ignored his earlier threat. Fox informed him that the two's friendship was now over. Fox taunted Snake about an impending assault of an assassination squad, but remarking that he would put up a good fight. Just like I mentioned, he is fascinated to see Snake's ability. Being the perfect soldier himself, there is something that is of interest to Frank Yeager to test the ability of a soldier, almost like a warrior mentality that feeds into some kind of competitive ego. Snake, Grey Fox here. Fox! It seems you've ignored my suggestion. My friendship with you ends here. This elevator will be your coffin. What? I sent the hit squad trained solely for close quarters. Give them my regards. Ugh, when I find you, Fox. Snake, I'm happy to say farewell. Frank Yeager assuming his fan alias again, Fox then alerted Snake to Night Fright's presence on the third floor. Of course, going back on what he said and would further continue to assist Snake throughout his mission. Of course, this fortress in Zanzibar was probably one of the hardest infiltration missions, if not the hardest, that Snake had to undertake. Of course, eventually at some point, Frank Yeager and Snake would come to blows. Of course, first beginning with the Metal Gear, and then eventually with Hand to Hand. No doubt that this was all under Big Boss's orders, of course. But it seemed like Frank Yeager had a personal matter he wished to settle with Solid Snake. Like I said, one out of ego and competition, because given on the fact that at the time, during Foxhound, that Solid Snake was actually the junior of Grey Fox. If one thing is evidently clear, is how much that war itself has taken a toll on Frank Yeager's mind. With all these decorated awards, these names and titles he's received, it goes without saying that he is the perfect soldier. Sadly, probably the only life that he would ever know, and sadly one of the only biggest influences he had on his life, himself would become war itself by driving the war economy and using war strictly as a business and in fact falling in love with it as a whole and actually embodying what it is to be a war mongerer. It really goes about saying that ever since Frank's childhood, he didn't really have much of a choice on how his life path would take, which naturally was all just based around conflict and warfare. And unfortunately, one of his only saviors, Big Boss, wouldn't actually be too much of a great influence on him as Big Boss himself would take a dark descent into villainy and within the hand-to-hand -hand combat fight between Grey Fox and Solid Snake, naturally Solid Snake would be the victor. But of course, after the battle would ensue, Frank exhausted and bleeding from the wounds to his head, Fox acknowledged that his defeat means he had to retire from the codename of Fox. He then told Snake that he had supported Big Boss, not because he even felt indebted to the man for saving his life in the past, but because he could only find his purpose in battle, despite professing a hatred. For war itself. Sadly, with Frank Yeager's Stockholm Syndrome to war, like most war veterans and mercenaries, have a PTSD and a need to find themselves in conflict. Saddening reality is that it's all that Frank knows and can never be. Normal life for him just isn't possible. With all the plenty of great themes and teachings within what war tells us, especially in Metal Gear Solid, is that the impact that it has on soldiers who come back from war and find themselves without a purpose, which is very fitting for why Frank took to Big Boss, because the ideology would seem fitting for someone like Frank Yeager, an army without a nation, an army without government. Soldiers will go where they're needed. We have no nation, no philosophy, no ideology. We go where we're needed, fighting not for country, not for government, but for ourselves. We need no reason to fight. We fight because we are needed. We will be the deterrent for those with no other recourse. We are soldiers without borders, our purpose defined by the era we live in. Of course, Fox would admit to providing anonymous tips by radio, and of course, assuring everything that he did was out for Snake's interest. Assumedly at this point, Fox was going to die, so of course Snake gave him one last reassuring talk to let him know that Natasha would be waiting for him on the other side, if there was an afterlife. Of course, shortly afterwards, Snake would make his confrontation with Big Boss, in which he'd defeat him. With the mission all said and done, it was presumed then that Grey Fox was dead, but it turns out there was a fate a lot more worse than death in the cards for Frank Yeager. A man really at this point who deserved his rest, he'd been through enough. Frank Yeager's body was secretly recovered by the Patriots, restored through cybergenetic surgery. 
Fox would become a guinea pig for Foxhound Chief Medic Dr. Clark, or Paramedic, and her gene therapy experiments was a powered exoskeleton, which of course was grafted directly onto his body. By inserting a cybergenetic module on the skeletal level, granting Fox at hand strength and agility, and gene therapy was also used to overcome stress, concentration, and rejection responses. Of course, he was subjected to drugs for years by Dr. Clark. It was only then, of course, under the orders of Big Mama that Naomi would assist within her brother's escape from the clutches of the Patriots. Of course, he wasn't the same. His mind was unstable, causing a rapid deterioration of his identity. What? My hand! Stealth camouflage. Can't you even die right? You were lucky. We'll meet again! Who are you? I like you. I have no name. That... that exoskeleton! Of course, once again, we'd see Frank Yeager make his appearance within Shadow Moses. Of course, at this time, nobody was too certain if that was Frank Yeager. Of course, with the effects of all the medication and torture on his mind, he was clearly still unstable. But he did get a slight bit of revenge against the very man as well who was part of the project. Of course, that being Ocelot by chopping off his damn hand. Of course, with that being said, Grey Fox threw out the majority of Snake's mission, just like in Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake, the MXS game, that's where he would once again assist Solid Snake within codec calls to help him out through Shadow Moses. Of course, under the weirdest name I think I've ever heard, which is Deep Throat. I think somebody might want to take a look at Hideo Kojima's Pornhub history tab. Snake, be careful. There are Claymore mines around there. Use a mine detector. Who are you? Just call me Deep Throat. Deep Throat. Subscribe to the voice box. Grey Fox would make many encounters in Shadow Moses. By this time, it was a revelation for Snake, as he finally understood who it was behind the cybergenetic suit. But if one thing is evidently clear, he set out on fighting Snake, in a way to cleanse his soul, perhaps maybe clear his guilty conscience. But most of all, he wanted to test his skills and abilities against Snake, who was considered the best soldier in the world. And mostly because he wanted to die on the battlefield, as he felt that that was his fate and the only way to end his suffering. The tragic thing is that history has once repeated itself again, as he has further been subjected to the same treatment he did when he was null, subjected to be nothing more than a weapon. <sighs> I felt that snake. Do you remember me now? Can't be. You were killed in Zanzibar. At some point, Grey Fox later joined forces with Snake against Metal Gear Rex, and it was thanks to him that he managed to destroy the mech by attacking its radome, interfering with the seal cockpit's sensory input, giving Snake the chance to get the shot on Liquid. He also later slipped that he was Deep Throat to Snake, and also noted that the latter he had an age well. Fox ordered Snake to fire on the cockpit, but his close proximity to him made Snake reluctant to do so. I'm willing to kill his friend in the process as Snake hesitated. I am a snake! Fox! Can you really shoot? You'll kill him too! Now, in front of you, I can finally die. After Zanzibar, I was taken from the battle. Neither truly alive nor truly no good. good. I can't do An it. Undying shadow. 
in a world of light. But soon, soon, it will finally end. Die! Tragically, Grey Fox would eventually die. And sadly, when he died, the old thing came to a close. The dark story of his legacy behind what tormented him all this entire time. Seems ever since he was a child, he could never break free from the control of those who was controlling him. But for once, he could finally die in battle, just as he intended. Of course, I think he would have preferred it if it was by the hand of the man he respected, Solid Snake. But of course, in this moment, the best thing really was for Grey Fox to finally be put out of his misery. This has to be one of the most impactful moments within Metal Gear Solid. The perfect soldier was now no longer tormented by the demons within him and all the trauma that haunted him. And would finally redeem himself of the ultimate form of redemption by admitting the death of Naomi's parents, and in his dying wish wanted Snake to expose his dark history and truth behind why her parents was murdered. But of course, out of respect, Solid Snake felt that it was the best thing to do to keep that side of history a chapter worth closed. But one that would stay with Naomi Hunter for the rest of her life. I was alone for so long until I met my big brother and him. Your big brother? Yes. Frank Yeager. What? He was a young soldier when he picked me up near the Zambezi River. I was half dead from starvation, and he shared his rations with me. Yes. Frank Yeager. The man who you destroyed was my brother and my only family. No. Grey Fox? We survived that hell together, Frank and I. He protected me. He's my one connection. The only connection I have to my past. Frank Yeager's legacy would long continue after his death. Snake, amongst many, and Olga Kalukovic would pay some sort of a homage to his legend. Of course, Olga Kalukovic would resume the role of being Grey Fox in order to assist Raiden within his mission. Just like when Grey Fox did for Solid Snake, such as the elusive and yet notorious nanomachine calls Deep Throat. And during the Big Shell incident, Solid Snake would reference his good friend Grey Fox's last words to Raiden when explaining why he was motivated to carry out anti-Metal Gear activities, keeping the legacy alive of Frank Yeager. How could you come back to all this? Why keep fighting? There's something my best friend said to me once. What? We're not tools of the government or anyone else. Fighting was the only thing I was good at, but at least I always fought for what I believed in. With the memory of Grey Fox being kept alive, would serve its great purpose in order to aid Snake and Riding in the mission. Of course, at the time, Riding unknowingly just thought that he was just being stabbed in the back. Of course, would all be good of the wider plan to get him inside Arsenal gear. It seems like the meme, the legend of Grey Fox lives on. Almost in a sense, he is there with them, within spirit, within ideology. Ready for some shut eye. Oh. For most of the Metal Gear Solid franchise, some might not see the big importance of Frank Yeager. Of course, within Metal Gear Solid 4, we can see that the importance of Frank's redemption is lived on through Snake, but most noticeably, Naomi. It massively goes without saying that Naomi's impact within the game is a huge part of shutting down the Patriot system, the very same organization that tore Frank's life apart. Of course, Frank Yeager was like a brother to Naomi, and of course she would hold on to his legacy and more dearly than anyone else in the franchise. The beauty of Frank Yeager's ending is the fact that yes, whilst he died, there were still people who carried on his meme, carried on his name and remembered the good side of the things that he did in order to do the right thing. Snake. Remember Frank? Frank Yeager. Grey Fox. They twisted his body for their experiments and nullified his broken heart with nanomachines. SOP has taken it even further and applied it to living human beings. The sins of war these soldiers carried inside them returned to assault them in the form of unimaginable shell shock. The meaning in the system may have changed, but the battlefield hasn't. 
Until that point, war was like a game to them. And then suddenly, reality came crashing down. And that reality would come crashing down, at least for the Patriots, as they was now finally destroyed once and for all. For everybody who had their hand in making it possible, of course, to free us from the shackles of the Patriot system control that had everybody under his control with no free will. The beauty of this ending was, I think, was a great send-off, especially for Grey Fox. One thing that I overlooked at the time, but within the words that Naomi was speaking, was referencing her brother, Grey Fox. As we can see with the very virus that she designed along with Sonny, with the name Fox Alive, is a perfect example of her wishing to free the captive foxes in a beautiful metaphorical poetic goodbye and farewell to Frank Yeager, and everybody else for that matter. It would seem like in the end that Frank Yeager's body might have been used along with his mind, but one thing they couldn't do is hold down his spirit, the spirit of the warrior, of being the perfect soldier to overthrow the corruption of the Patriot system. What she created was an anti-AI fox die. But this virus's name is Fox Alive. It's the conceptual opposite of the nanomachines that I created all those years ago. We wish to free the captured foxes. To let them run free in the wild. Even within to the coming future of Metal Gear Solid Rising after the events of The Guns of the Patriots, we can see how unintentionally the meme has lived on. Of course, Frank Yeager being cybergenetically enhanced with his emotions stripped with nanomachines as such and medication, one way or another, Frank Yeager always found a way to live on through the times, through people, through information, and by downright tragedy and downright redemption. What a fucking story. Well, anyway, guys, this is The Voice Box. And that's all I have. Please like, hit subscribe, give some support to the voice box, and until we meet again. <laughs>